Well, welcome everyone. I want to thank you for joining our Facebook Live today. And, you know, I just want to say, I know um, hearts are going out to anybody that is in Florida. Uh, I know that you all are really suffering with what's happened there. Um, and my brother's also out there. He went up to Dustin, lost his house entirely. So uh, anybody that's out that way, I just want you to know we are praying for you. Um, and we, we know that what you're going through, through, you know, experiences ourselves. So um, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, this is Life Insurance Awareness Month. And I want to take this opportunity to speak with you and my good friend, Howard Dvorkin, who's a CPA and a published author, as well as a frequent guest on major network and cable news shows. So he knows everything about getting out of debt and saving money. And of course, I've owned my own insurance business for three decades and counting. So you might think insurance and a CPA are going to be boring, but I don't think either one of us are boring. <laughs> but you can tell You're me. definitely not boring, Vicki. I'm not, I'm not boring. <laughs> you know I like to whoop it up sometimes, Howard, right? Um, <laughs> so definitely. let's just dive right in and have Howard introduce himself. And um, welcome, Howard. Well, thank you very much. Uh, well, following on what you said, uh, our, our hearts go out to those that are victimized by this hurricane. We actually at debt.com are located in South Florida. So we know very well what what happens when a big old hurricane comes by because we keep getting hit year after year. And you know, this one we were lucky to miss it. So uh, unfortunately my brother in up in uh, up in northern Florida are de definitely getting pounded on. So our hearts go out and Certainly, uh, you know, people, this brings in a good place to, and a good time to talk about the necessity of mm -hmm. insurance, because you never know. I mean, our, our slogan at debt.com is when life happens and certainly life just happened. Yeah. We are here, uh, myself, quick rundown. I'm a CPA, as you said. I have a couple books out there. I'm actually working on a third, but it's a it's a labor of love. Um, I've been getting people out of debt for over 30 years, or almost 30 years, I guess I should say. Uh, I think the amounts are 10 million and counting. Uh, my my team and I uh, we have a very seasoned team for 30 years, and we've seen it all. And people need to be aware but more importantly they need to be able to handle what life throws at them and yeah. certainly focusing on insurance can do that right so i like your slogan and i have another one plan for the unplanned i mean and sometimes death happens uh when we're least expecting it that cemetery is filled with people that weren't planning on passing away so unfortunately death is going to happen to everybody and i know that sometimes people don't want to talk about it but when you do have life insurance um, on yourself or the breadwinner or a family member it can actually change their life because it's going to give them a tax-free benefit to them either replacing their salary or getting out of debt or doing all those different things so um you know, we know this is the end of Life Insurance Awareness Month. We're, we're approaching only, what, two more days left. But I've also heard it called death insurance. And, you know, you and I have a, a great synergy regarding debt insurance and things like that. Um, and I just want to say life insurance is for anybody. Uh, why people need it, it's for replace salaries. It's for mortgage payoffs. It's for you know, it's college funding that possibly you didn't save for and now the breadwinner is gone and you, the wife or family have to, you know, submit their kids to college with no resources. I, I believe wholeheartedly in securing the right plan. I'm seeing a lot lately, people were 50 years old buying a 10 year term and now they're 60 and they're looking at me like, why didn't I get a 20 or 30 year term? And the answer is their advisor didn't advise them right. So, um, getting the appropriate term length or permanent policy is so important, not just the death benefit, but how long it's going to be there for you. So, and I'm sure you've seen Howard people that have passed and then the spouse is settled with a bunch of debt because they didn't have any life insurance, right? Well, there's lots of problems that happen when somebody dies, especially unexpectedly, 
yeah, they still have to take care of their loved ones. You're not buying life insurance for yourself. You're buying it for those you love and you care about. And, you know, you could find any reason in the world not to have life insurance, can't afford it, tough month, you know, my expenses are out of control. But guess what? Life does happen. Yeah. Certainly, you know, if somebody passes away, if you have young kids, you need it. Certainly, uh, if you have mortgages, you need it, school to pay for, college or or even private school, whatever the case may be, bills mm-hmm. are need to be paid because your loved ones keep living even though you're not there to help support them. So right. certainly uh, during this month, and, and, and it's a great month and it's a great topic, that people need to be aware of the necessity. And, and really insurance is a necessity for those people that are living you know, life on the edge and they don't have millions of dollars saved up. This is a way to secure a future for the people you care about. You know, there was an interesting survey because of all this inflation that we saw that we're having, that we're experiencing. A lot of people are saying, I can't afford uh, life insurance. And that is a huge problem because you don't know when you're, you're going to need it until you need it. And it's kind of like a hurricane. Uh, the hurricane of life hitting you and people must continue to make those payments because this is extremely important and you shouldn't forego or default from your premiums. Right. So, and many people have potentially some insurance through their work. Our recommendation always is to secure a policy outside of the work. If you get retired or laid off, you lose that policy for most intensive purposes. You don't, you can't carry that on. I put that but, the work policies, Vicki, don't even cover a lot. They're usually like fifty thousand dollars, and if you want, you could buy it up to a certain amount. But you're right; you should have an outside policy. That you own yourself, right? Right. That you that you're in charge of making the premiums. So you got to be careful. What happens if the company goes out of business and they right. didn't make your premiums for a couple months before they right. went out of business, which happens. That's right. Very sad, very scary stuff. Very scary. So you know how much I love insurance. It's crazy that I love it. And you are the expert on debt. So what are some of the scary debts um, you wouldn't want to pass on to your loved ones when you pass on? I mean, listen, if you have student loans, you have to realize when people die, they die with debt. If they have debt, the debt dies with them unless they have assets. And the estate is responsible for paying those debts. Say if they have a student loan and it's $100,000. Say if they have a car loan and it's $10,000 or $20,000. Guess what? That all has to be paid before any distributions of the estate come to the beneficiaries. So that is a very scary thing. Think about this. You have a half a million dollar policy, but you have a couple hundred thousand dollars in, in outstanding debt. The estate is responsible for paying that. Right. First. And that could be, be the difference between putting food on your table on your table or not in this. So you have to be adequately protected. Make sure that you that you buy enough policy, uh, enough insurance to protect the loved ones and cover the debt. And sometimes you need to review your insurance every single year with somebody that knows what they're doing so you can make those decisions. Don't be underinsured. Because the worst case scenario, say you have a quarter million dollar policy, you pass away and you have a quarter million dollars worth of debt, your beneficiaries get nothing. So be careful. And and also I want to make a comment on that. So many people wait too long to get life insurance and then they might have some health issues or their age is older. Um, And then if there was an illness and then they pass away, there's also the medical bills or 
you know, other debt, like you just mentioned, is going to follow with that family and those need to get paid first. And if they were in a long-term care facility, that may or may not come out of that life insurance proceeds if they were, you know, using their own money to pay for that care. So be super careful about just pushing this aside and think, you know, tomorrow I'm going to do this because procrastination happens to everybody. We're not going to wake up one morning and say, today's the day I'm going to buy life insurance. No, it's usually somebody passing away or a health issue. And then you say, you know what? I need to get insurance. And then sometimes you can't get insurance. Vicky. Right. I mean, the saddest thing is when people come into my office at debt.com and they're, they're, they charged up a ton of money on their credit card mm-hmm. bills. There's very little income coming in other than to pay their existence. Right. There's no money to pay their credit card bills. And there's not a lot we can do. So you got to be adequately covered. You got to do an insurance checkup every single year to make sure that uh, you're properly covered. You know, I do want to ask a question uh vicky because i think it's a good topic what's the difference between term insurance which you mentioned before and whole life because a lot of people don't know the difference yep so i'm going to rephrase the word whole life to be more in the modern tense which is called a fixed universal life so what that means is we design that to age 100 or 120. so how am i showing am i showing my age vicky you are (laughs) sorry (laughs) so so in in any ways you buy a policy and it's forever so it's going to be more expensive it's going to have some cash value in there but i run that cash value very lean i'm not doing it for the life for the cash value. i'm doing it for the life insurance benefit now permanent insurance is more expensive than term so you can buy a 10 year term, a 15 year term, a 20 year term, a 30 year term. And what that means if today I'm 60, yes. Um, if I buy a 20 year term, it's not so. It's, you know, it's, not so. it's only going to cover me to age 80. So if I die at age 81, there's no coverage for my family. So what I do is I bought a permanent policy at age 40 and every five years I add on new term because my other terms are going to be canceling off. So I run a lot of life insurance on me when I die, not if I die, my family is going to get whatever term and permanent I bought during that time. Cause I want to secure my health. I'm in good health now. I don't want to wake up and some of my terms have canceled that all they've got left is the, is the index universal life. So super important, your advisor, if you're not working with me, um, and please work with me. Um, they're going to try to get you into something that they can churn every 10 years. So that means they get a new policy to write every 10 years. But what if you're uninsurable? Then you are knocked out and you have no coverage. So buy as long a term as possible if you can't afford a permanent policy. And then just know it's going to end most likely before your death if you look at terms. Well, you need to also be think about this because as you age, the policy, the premiums go up substantially because you're greater risk right Right. now. Term is relatively cheap. If you're, if you're, you know, on 40 or under, Uh, it gets very expensive when you're pushing 60, 70. Uh, So you have to probably take a look at that and try to get the longest uh policies that you can right. certainly uh review it on an annual basis you should go with somebody you trust such as vicky hopefully you trust vicky um but uh, the fact of the matter is people need to lock in insurance i personally do a 20-year policy um and actually and i have them laddered mm-hmm. i have three policies so if you know, if one expires, I still have two others right. and then I renew that and then ladder out the rest, yeah. the other two. So, but that gets expensive. And as I approach 60 years old, Vicki, the premiums are substantially uh, higher and you may want to look at a, a permanent insurance right. option. So one thing I do want to correct or state, maybe you didn't clarify this, but once you lock in your age and your health, it does not go up. 
the only time it's ever going to go up is if it expires and you have to buy a new policy exactly. you, you want to add on another policy so under age 60 we can probably do a 30-year term which is ideal because then that will cover you to age 85 to 90 but you want to lock in as long as term as possible know that it's going to expire if you are over 60 you can only get a 20 to 25 year term so um, super important another thing i want to stress on is beneficiary updates if you are married and all of a sudden find yourself divorced or single widowed you want to make sure your beneficiaries are updated i can't tell you how many ex-spouses are getting life insurance benefits because they forgot to update their beneficiaries that, so, also, that also holds true with pensions also yeah. because oh. And I've seen it where this is a this is a terrible case. Somebody had a gotten divorced, married to a woman, and ended up marrying somebody else, had children. The first spouse got yep. the entire yep. proceeds of the pension. Yeah, yeah, so. or the four hundred one k. So always update those beneficiary forms. So yep. hopefully you guys are all learning a little bit of something right now. Um, so Howard, I want to ask you, so many people might be juggling debts and think they cannot afford life insurance, especially with inflation the way it is today. So what do you think the best way is to assess your budget so you can find the money to buy life insurance? What well, do you think? Certainly, you know, this is, and I'm going to start this by saying the one thing you cannot afford is not to keep your policies current and not have insurance. I'm a big mm -hmm proponent of insurance, certainly if you have loved ones and family, uh, family, if you care about, um, you need to budget for it. It is as important as car insurance, as uh, electric bill, you need to budget, figure out how much you're spending, uh, and, and look at all the categories on debt.com. And I'm sure on your website, uh, Vicki, you have, uh, family budgets available yep. where people could put their uh, information in and figure out how much they're spending every month and make sure that is a permanent fixture in your budget that doesn't that has to be paid you can do without going to lunch every day or going to a sporting event but you cannot be, be without insurance so you right. need to make sure that you budget yep. every time and budget accurately. Yep. And certainly if you need help budgeting, I'm sure somebody in your office can help. Yes. Budget or certainly somebody at debt.com. Right. Uh, that's a very important thing. Hey, somebody just sent in Vicki a question. It's an interesting question. And only you, only you can answer it. What is what is the be your own bank life insurance program and do you recommend it so meaning that you've got a bucket of money that you feel is going to go out to your beneficiaries upon your death and yes. using dollar for dollar well it obviously it all depends upon your estate and what you're worth so life insurance is pennies on the dollar so if you've got a 10 million dollar estate and you say you know what my family doesn't need any more money then maybe you're not the right candidate for life insurance, but you could take some of that money from your estate and quadruple it into a tax-free benefit. So I like using uh, life insurance for taxes, estate taxes that might be due, for IRA taxes that might be due, then the beneficiary can inherit that tax-free because that life insurance will get paid tax-free. So be your own bank, uh, obviously everybody's different and individualized. I use the rule of thumb. 15 times your annual earnings is what you should have in life insurance to start the conversation with. So let's say, for instance, you're making 100000 a year and you've got young kids. That's $1.5 million of insurance. That way, the beneficiary can withdraw that 100000 for 15 years to get that family protected. So I use that rule of thumb. If it's too expensive, we lower it down. And the important thing is to remember that life insurance proceeds are tax free. Right. So you're not going to have to pay tax on that. Mm -hmm. And actually, $1.5 million sounds like a tremendous amount of money. But in today's costs, it doesn't go very far. Right. And we're, seeing salary. Go up, we're seeing interest rates go up. 
it could get eaten up. The one thing, and 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 you know my wife, uh, yes, Vicky, and and I was lecturing her, of course, this morning actually on don't invade principle. Never invade principle. You got you have to live off the principle where and invest it properly and safely so it generates money right. to to afford. So it doesn't mean that you have to take if you have a 1.5 million dollar policy you could take a hundred thousand maybe you invest that 1.5 and maybe it can generate the hundred thousand dollars a year and um, still at the end of the year you still have your 1.5 million right right so that's a very important thing i know coming from uh a, a, a household that you know, I lost my father at a young age and, and frankly, we didn't have a lot of money, but we did have that insurance, pro right. the insurance proceeds and they did come in handy. They did right. come in handy. Then people know that it's there. It gives comfort to people, um, but people need to be aware. Right. Uh, here's another question that, that I see, uh, should I wait, Vicky, for life to buy life insurance or apply for life insurance after I lose 50 pounds? Is there any thought process there? Well, uh, you first of all, you don't know what your health is going to be in a year from now. So my recommendation, get a policy that might be a little bit higher than it should be and then replace it if you lose 50 pounds. But, you know, people in their minds say they're going to lose 50 pounds. It's tough to lose 10 pounds. So if you can do that, then we reapply with a new company and then you get the lower rate. But to wait, now you're getting yourself uninsured and who knows what could happen to your health in that meantime. If you get cancer, heart disease, heart attack, whatever that could be, now you're going to be uninsurable. So I say don't wait. I agree with you, by the way. You know, you can always get a new policy after you lose a ton. Cancel it. Right. Cancel the other one and cancel the other one. Um, another good question and goes back to the term versus permanent insurance. Uh, if you own your own business, which is better for you? Again, individual. I own my own business. I have both. So like you, you own your own business. You have both. You have a permanent and you have a term. So when my kids were younger, I loaded up more term because I needed to be sure they were going to be protected if I died early. Now some of those terms are canceling off and I'm buying more insurance that has like a long-term care rider added on. So if I ever get sick and have to have any type of assisted living, it does have that benefit attached on. And those are the new hybrid policies they are really great. Okay. This is an interesting question that I see on the screen and it says, if I have a big social media following and they always share GoFundMe accounts, do I really need life insurance for it? Because I'm thinking my followers will cover me. I think I could answer that. The answer is you need life insurance. I'm not going to give you money because you weren't responsible on getting life insurance. The answer is no. Right. I mean, that GoFundMe is one of the biggest problems right now in America and across the world that people, oh, because I didn't get health insurance, now I want you to pay my health insurance bill? No, right. no. You, you right. take responsibility for yourself. I mean, and you never know what the scams are either. So you need right. to take good responsibility. Don't, you got to rely on yourself because right. at the end of the day, nobody's going to take care of you, your loved ones, the way you're going to take care of them. Right. Um, you know, listen, insurance is a very tricky thing and it's a very complicated uh, uh, financial product. And you have to understand the nuances. Term is relatively simple, but when you get into these permanent insurance or what I refer to as whole life policies, which I'm showing my age, uh, certainly they get they get confusing and you have to be careful about the investments that you right. put in there. And certainly, you know, they're, they're, those investments are affected by sometimes the stock market. Can right. you talk a little bit about that? Right. So you mentioned living off the interest that your accounts are doing. Um, right now, most accounts are down between 30 and 
45%. I see investment accounts every single day. Uh, that's a problem if we want to live off the interest because it's not making any money. So, you know, that's a challenge. Uh, if you're approaching retirement, there's other ways on protecting your income. And we do a lot of fixed index annuities because they just work. They're like a pension with your money and you do spend down your principal, but guess what? It'll give you a paycheck for the rest of your life. And if you buy life insurance, you can replace that policy or that benefit with life insurance. So my viewpoint on this is spend every last dollar you have and buy life insurance and pass that down to your beneficiaries. I'm being told we have a viewer question and okay. I don't know where it is. Ah, I thought it was illegal to deny somebody insurance due to illness or pre-existing condition. You're talking that, about health insurance versus life insurance. Right. Yeah. That is a, that is a very good question. Yeah. I, I will tell you, I've seen people denied for life, it, it, life insurance all the time. Um, certainly, you know, your health has to take, a, a, take, take into consideration. And also, you know, depending on your health and your history, your health history, that affects your premiums, correct, Vicki? Right. Yeah, I've got some clients that have waited too long to get insurance and now all of a sudden they get diagnosed with cancer, heart disease, diabetes, um, and they can only get a death benefit policy, like a, like a burial policy of 25,000. So you wanna definitely do this when it's not, it's not important, right? So if you're 40, 45, 50, and you're raising a family and your health is good, that's when you need to get this. It's kind of like trying to get hurricane insurance after the hurricane's there. So. You just got to take With care of the day before the hurricane hits. Yeah. Yeah. Or a house burning down. Now I want to get, you know, fire insurance. No, you get it when you don't need it. Then you put it in your vault and your safety deposit box and you hope you never use it. Right. It is, it is challenging. I mean, insurance, it's a necessity. Right. And let's face it. It is a necessity because without because your income, mm -hmm. it, it's, replaces the income that you're bringing in and for god's sakes if you have loved ones take care of them yep in this life and after that's right that's right that's good so we're moving right along i we i know we've written some questions out to make sure we get through any um all of them so somebody wrote my parents are on medicaid do i still need life insurance for them what are my thoughts so Medicaid is different than Medicare. Medicaid states that we want the government to take care of our health insurance costs. Um, typically, if they're on Medicaid, they've already spent their assets down. And regardless if you need insurance for them, it's a personal decision if they're even insurable. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of a, a loose comment, but we just need to address this one by one, you know. Medicaid is different than Medicare. I mean, I have seen in the past that, it, and I don't know how to digest this, children of parents that are older take insurance policies out on these folks for the eventual payout. Right. And the policies sometimes are expensive, but the benefit is significant. What's right. your thought on that? So, um, again, if you got the resources to buy life insurance on your parents that are healthy, why not? And if you add that long-term care right around there and they ever get sick, you've got a policy. Uh, I was able to do that for my mom. I have life insurance on me. If I ever get sick, I've got that rider built on, but you know, it all depends upon if you can afford it. If you can afford it, why not? They're going to die. We're all going to die one day. So say that. That, I'm not ready. I'm not I'm there. Not, I'm not either. But, but one thing is happening lately with my clients is we're seeing a lot of sandwich generations. So that means Howard, you're in my age group is taking care of our older parents and we're still taking care of our children. So I have a seminar in a few hours. And one of the questions I ask in the beginning, people raise their hand if they're still paying their children cell phone bill their adult children's cell phone bill and <laughs> the entire room raises their hand and i asked them that question so you're paying a hundred to three hundred dollars a month 
for one or two or three children's cell phone bills. And you're sacrificing yourself for going out to dinner or what have you. So you just have to really realize that we're in this sandwich generation. We're still taking care of our parents. Some of us are. We're also taking care of our children, whether it's college or just helping them buy a house. And that may or may not allow us to justify life insurance. So if I put out, you know, two or $300,000 on a parent, both my parents are deceased, but I might want to buy life insurance on them because I want that money back when they die tax-free. Could, could make sense, right? And, and, and frankly, that's what I did with my, my mother. Mm -hmm. I paid for all the expenses that were covered by insurance. Right. And when she passed, the insurance came in and I also paid for the insurance premiums. Right. I did too. significant, but when she passed, it paid me back right. all the money that I spent. Yep. Which was yep. nice. And then the remainder I gave to my sister because I didn't need it. But yep. the fact of the matter is, you know, it'll reimburse you for those expenditures. And let's face it, in today's society, it gets it's expensive to take care of aging parents. Very yep. expensive. Yep. And very. certainly that is a great question uh, mm -hmm. that we see a lot. I mean, people certainly need to budget for life insurance. Think of it not as a luxury. It's a, it's a cost that you have to have. Not that it's, there's wants and needs in people's budgets. And it's certainly not a want, it's a need, it's a necessity. And people need to view insurance in, su in such a manner. Yep, you're right. Moving right along. Thank you all for staying on. We've got a couple more questions we're going to get through. But um, one question I see a lot is, what's worse, having bad credit or no credit? What is your take on that, Howard? Listen, no credit, at least you can repair it. You Not, not that you can need to repair it, but you can build credit. So no credit is better than bad credit. Bad credit, obviously, you have to repair it. It takes time. If you do nothing, it rehabilitates itself in uh, 10 years uh, or seven, sorry, seven years, uh, depending on what the item is in 10 years, if it's a, a bigger item. Yeah. However, um, certainly no credit is okay to have. Um, because you can, you could go get a store card because they'll give them to anybody and right. there's all sorts of lending opportunities for people to build their credit with regards to, uh, utilizing, um, uh, uh, prepaid accounts or prepaid credit cards and things like that. So there is a way to build up good credit over yep. time. Yep. There is. And get with you guys if, uh, if you have that issue. So we're going to wrap up. Um, I just want to mention that if anybody out there needs some help with your debt, okay, we've got an incredible team ready to help you. Um, they should go to debt.com forward slash Vicky and our team will help you with debt. And don't forget to go to codoinsurance.com for any life insurance, health insurance needs that you have. I'll make sure that you're handled with exceptional care because you are on this call today and referring us. So Howard, um, you're the best. I'm thankful for you, uh, thankful for our partnership and um, hope to all take come to us if you need us to take care of you, right? Listen, it's a great combination. It's a great team. You know, you are the most knowledgeable person I know in the insurance business and you're completely trustworthy, which is, which is great to see. Gotta have that, right? Certainly if people need debt, uh, if they're challenged by their debt, we're here, we're here to help. And we've been here for 30 years, so I'm ready to serve as much as uh, I possibly can. You're the best. Okay. Thanks. Good to see you all. Thanks for joining us. I got to get back to work. <laughs> Thanks okay. guys. Take care.